What's up everybody, I'm Chris. This is BS for Build. Today we are starting on a pretty fun project. We are working on putting a double din stereo in our 68 Camaro. I'm pretty excited about this project because we're taking something that is just much more modern and putting it in an old car that by a lot of rights doesn't belong in it. This little box has a lot of things on it that didn't even exist when this car was made. Uh, it's got a computer. The first production computers really came out about seven years after this car was made. It's got GPS that didn't exist when this car was made. It's got digital music that didn't exist when this car was made. It's got DVDs that didn't exist when this car was made. Bluetooth, cell phone hookup, all sorts of stuff. So we're taking this little box of modern miracles and we're gonna integrate it into our Camaro that is much, much, much older. And I'm very, very excited to do this and see if we can get some of those modern uh, niceties that our newer cars have in my nice old car. Stay tuned. Okay, well we've hopped back inside the Camaro now and just out of curiosity, I've never been able to get this glove box to open and I know if I had the space here and I could reach over here, it might help me out. So I was playing with this a little bit with my key turned it to the left one too many times and pulled the locking mechanism straight out of the glove box. Um, that's not the worst thing in the world. I know I could uh, put that back in there and I'm getting a little bit closer to getting this off. So I actually want, I'm going to spend a couple minutes first and try and get this glove box open. See if I can do that. It might gain me a little bit of access to work my way kind of over here so I can run wires and things like that. After just a little bit of playing around with this lock, I was able to find out how to use a flathead screwdriver and pry this well, that's not supposed to happen. Pry this to drop down, which allowed me to open this up. And uh, there's just, this is just resting in here. So I'm gonna pull, go ahead and pull this out and that crappy air freshener, which makes these, this car smell terrible. Um, it smells fruity like the 70s. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna pop that plastic out and then that gives me access to uh, get back here and be able to work back here a little bit more. Okay, so something I just found out, or I just realized, I was like, oh, that's a little bit thick. Look, they made it thick so that you could put cup holders right here. They look more like cocktail holders to me. I think they're to be used when the car is parked. Well, I think back in the day you could drink and drive. Um, so maybe you'd have your girlfriend here mixing you up a little bit of gin and tonic or something. But, uh, shit, I'm not driving today. It might be time to get a little cocktail going. Oh, yeah, that's definitely what that's for. Mix myself up a little bit of gin and... Grapefruit soda water. Cheers, everybody. Give myself about five minutes before I knock that over. All right, back to work. I'm gonna pull this off and then build a template for the size of this and look at it against that. I'ma try my best to love forever, to enlighten I'm a spaz, baby, I'm a knight and I'm a glad take off your flight yeah. If you wanna stun me, nigga, keep on trying If I leave, I'm not leaving inside of you won't see me cry Now that we have our cutout made that matches the front of the stereo Sorry, it's so white, it's gonna screw up the camera what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking around where I want to mount this stereo and how I want to do it. Now one thing that I need to keep in mind with this car, some cars, you know, modern cars don't have collectible value. If you add something that's adding value, you're going to be okay, right? You add a nice stereo system in the car, when you go to sell it, it should be a bonus. People aren't thinking, hey, how do I get this nice stereo out of this, this car? Now with this Camaro, this is a collector's item, so a lot of people when they go to buy it, they might be thinking, I don't want a double din modern stereo in my classic car. I want old stuff that doesn't work like this, and I want an old stereo that doesn't really work, AM, FM, kind of stuff like that. <clears throat> so what I want to do is install the stereo doing the least amount of damage to the car that is irreversible. Um, what that means is hopefully that when a, if somebody goes to buy this car from me in the future that I can have a chance at selling it at a decent price. So what I'm thinking here is that this spot is looking good, although I really wanted to put some gauges in here. This spot is looking good. I know that this piece of metal is very valuable. Getting this piece of metal repaired or, or replaced is very, very expensive. So I wanna cut into this the least amount as possible. And I think 
um, it's pretty obvious that doing it right here is going to be the best way. Place the thing right here. I just have to make a couple cuts that go down through here to the ashtray. Now when we look at our fascia, some people might call this, or bezel, or whatever you want to call it, um, we are looking right here, and we're talking about putting the stereo right here on it. And it leaves some gaps on the sides. Jesus, sorry. Leave some gaps on the sides, but I can work with those. I can, uh, I can patch those up, and then I'll be resurfacing this anyways. So <clears throat> we're gonna kind of get around. We're gonna gonna be able to skirt around this. So this is definitely how I want to go for now. I'm gonna try and plan on going through here, this exact spot right here. So what that means for this is that I need to remove the um, ashtray. I uh, won't be smoking in this car, so I'm going to remove the ashtray, and then I'm going to make a actual, legitimately correct size template. This was kind of quickly mocked up. I need to make a really correct size template that I can then use as a uh, guide for my Dremel tool, so I can know exactly how much to cut out of this right here, so I can fit my stereo in there. Fished up till I stop breathing. All right, we've got our area all marked out that we want to cut off, so I'm going to grab my Dremel tool and go ahead and use a cutting blade, and I'm going to cut around that pink line right there. Uh, remember when working inside an enclosed space like this, it is very important to use ear protection. If you're uh, cutting or grinding, you can really damage your ears with the acoustics of that grinder going through metal. So ear and eye protection, always. Okay, we got our hole cut. Uh, as you can probably see, I hope you can see in the video while I was shooting a time lapse. Um, I did this side with the Dremel tool and it took a little bit longer. Um, it's pretty precise, but there's a little bit of waste in the metal. And, uh, and then I went through my little disc there and rather than swapping the disc, I said, hey, I'll run downstairs and grab that body saw um, that I was using in a prior episode. The body saw just cut through everything like butter and it just, uh, I felt like I had a lot more control. So body saw, Man, 20 bucks at Harbor Freight. It's paid for itself over and over. Make sure that you don't hit wires behind it. I paid attention, so I did not. So let's see if the stereo will fit in here now. I actually have not test fitted it, so. Okay, that's nice. It's about, I don't know, quarter inch of play, um, which is good because I have about a quarter to an eighth inch of brackets that I need to place in here so I can bolt this thing up. So, the next thing I need to do is look at my brackets that came with this thing. They're right here. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't come with any screws. So I gotta run down to the hardware store and get some screws so I can test fit these brackets. So basically, they bolt onto the side of the stereo and then they're gonna bolt onto the car here, something like that about. I'm gonna try and uh, counter the stereo out a little bit. So the bracket will go flush with the body. The stereo will stick out a little bit straight so I'll have a better viewing angle because when I'm driving, that is facing down and the screen will not want to display a, a good display there. So I'll kick it out a little bit. But anyways, I'm gonna take a quick break, run to the hardware store and get some screws that fit into the side of this stereo. Pro tip if you're doing this at home, probably make sure you have all the hardware before you start. All right, so I went to the hardware store and grabbed a couple bolts for the side of this. I uh, actually bought a ton of them, but I only needed two on each side. So I, I, bought, I got the brackets and match spots and they're, they're levered out um, to adjust for the adjust for the slant in this. And so that goes in there and when you press on them, or when it's actually bolted up, it'll uh, fit nice. Whoops. Okay, so anyways, basically test fitting this right now. Test fit is successful. Um, but uh, no point in bolting it in until we get a lot of wires hooked up. So our wires are right here. It is gonna be a endless pain in the butt mess, so I'm probably not gonna film much of it for you guys. But um, 
I'm gonna start with the uh, power. So you need power to the car, and then you need ignition, and you need ground. Those are the basics. Now this is actually the only computer in this car, so there's not a lot of other stuff to work with. The wiring is as simple as it could possibly be. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, no, the camera won't focus. But inside here, under here, there's a bunch of different wires. Now the hardest part is being able to test them all. Now you need a multimeter to be able to test the voltage, but one of these wires is going to be inside here is going to be hot. That's always uh, got power to it. The next one will turn on when I turn my key in the ignition. That's con that's called an ignition wire. And that will come on and, and be hot once this thing rotates. That's when you want your stereo to turn on. So I'm gonna be looking for both of those. And then a ground wire is anything that's grounded to the frame. You can make your own, but I found a, gr a grounded point back here that somebody had uh, used previously in this car with the older stereo. So that's the one I'll be using. So for now, I'm gonna be hunting for those two wires and I'll come back to you guys right as soon as I find them out. Okay, well I said I wasn't gonna film much of this, but I totally lied. I just wanted to go through the steps of what I'm doing. I have a strong feeling that this is gonna be a really good way to go about this. <clears throat> so what we have here is, this is where you put your key. This is a uh, ignition key cylinder thing. That's the technical term, bro science. Uh, anyways, I popped it out of here. That's where it um, screws into the dash. I popped it out and you have this whole uh, mechanism here that runs all the wires through the back of it. So I'm assuming this large red one is power um, anyway, so I'm gonna use a multimeter to test all these things. I'm gonna unplug this and I'm gonna use a multimeter to test, make sure that's power, make sure, uh, and I have my ground over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my key into here and then see which one of these goes hot when I have ignition. So I'm gonna, and then the idea is I'm gonna be splicing wires from the back of this harness off down to my stereo. It's only about six inches away, so it's a pretty safe splice. Um, so this is, I mean, I'll let you know, know more after I actually try and accomplish it, but I'm pretty sure that this is a really good strategy on how to run power and ignition to your stereo. Okay, I wanted to film one more thing about uh, this power and power testing. I realized that in none of my videos I, I have I ever shown, you know, kind of how I go about testing uh, different power. Sorry, we're losing focus here. And uh, I want to show you guys that. So here's what we do. You grab a multimeter. This one is uh, from Harbor Freight, probably, a couple bucks. Set it to DC, uh, direct current, 20 volts. Um, that's what it's uh, looking to measure. And then you throw your uh, red lead up here, your black one down here, um, and then you turn it to on. Now, what, you want to, what we're trying to do is uh, ground the black wire. So I have the black wire running to ground um, on the car back there. And what I'm trying to test for right now is um, power, the uh, direct line from the battery that's always on. So you'll notice there is uh, there is not even the ignition cylinder, the key cylinder is is off the car. Um, we're looking for the, uh, the the direct power. So what I did was I took a little flat um, well I can't pull that out right now but this is one of those little uh, flat wire connectors that you can use to, uh, it's a male end of a wire, male female wire connector that you can use and you can pick these up in little kits um, from Harbor Freight. Basically it's just a piece of metal. I shoved the metal in one of these pinholes um, because that one is battery. Now on the back of my ignition it had a bunch of writing and it showed me where my ground was, where my key was, where my uh, uh, accessory and where my ignition and my battery was. So um, what we're going to be going for is accessory, not ignition. I, I misspoke earlier. We're going to be looking at accessory because I believe this car is built to have an accessory um, mode. So anyways, you put the positive over here. We believe that that goes into this red wire and that red wire holds 12 volt power. So then you take your multimeter. Sorry, this is going to be boring to people who have done this a hundred times. Uh, anyways, you take your multimeter, you touch your positive to to this. In this case, I'm going to stick it in here because I only have one hand. And then you look down and you read your multimeter. 12.58 volts. That is the 12.58 volts. It's coming from my battery directly. And that means that we have our hot wire. So that's one out of, and we have our ground. That means that that's a solid ground connection. So that's two out of the three wires that we need to find. The last one is the accessory wire, which I'm going to do the same thing but I'm gonna to have to do it through the back because I need to plug the ignition back in um, and turn this to hit the accessory on. So anyways, that's the process of how I go about testing wires and seeing which ones are hot and uh, if they carry the right voltage that I need. Okay, we're back and we've plugged into our three main wires that we need to manage the power. We have our power wire right here. 
we have our accessory wire right here and we have our ground wire right here so now the next thing I'm going to do is grab the stereo wiring harness match these up with the ones that the stereo wants and I'm going to reinstall my ignition for the car okay it's moment of truth time I've got my power my accessory my ground wires all run into my wiring harness for this uh, speaker stereo system and then plugged into the back of the stereo system so let's see if I can see if I can get this a decent angle so if we look at the stereo I'm hitting what I assume is the power button we got nothing let's see now what should happen I have not done this yet what should happen so throw the key in there turn it to the left Aha, we got some lights on. It says Android. Cool. Let's see what this thing does. I hope this isn't too boring. What if it was like an Android loading screen that took a half an hour? Very much Android. So Android. Preparing external storage. Wow, this is great. Okay, so... That's that. Go home. I don't know how to work an Android. I have an iPhone. Well, I wasn't quite able to get antenna television to work, but I found something quite better. My television. Oh my god, how good is this? Me watching me inside my car, inside my car, videotaping myself while I was videotaped. Loving it. I'm gonna grab my four hour old cocktail, sit back and enjoy this moment of wonderful inception. And, uh, man, I'm stoked. This is the most high tech uh, uh, car stereo I've ever had. So, next step is speakers. We need to get some speakers. Interesting thing about the Camaro, if you look over there in the door, there's no hole for speakers. They did not put speakers in the door back then. There's a couple of other places that they can go with high modifications, but what a lot of people do is they just build brackets to go under the dash under here. You build a bracket, you point the speaker down, the sound reflects off the bottom of the car and comes back out to you. That's what we're gonna be doing for the front. And then in the back, there is speakers already put in there. There's actually an amplifier too for a subwoofer. I gotta figure those things out um, as I go. I have not tested any of that stuff yet, but I gotta do that tomorrow because it's totally dark outside. Anyways, that's it for today. I'm totally stoked. <laughs> this is super funny. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, everybody, we're back. It is not the next day but it is the next day after because last night i went to the hardware store to get stuff and then i just got drunk and whatever that's that. the hardware store to get some stuff and then i got some beer and one thing led to another and i got no work done at all so it's the next day and i got some speakers some speaker wire and we're going to be working on mounting up the speakers tonight and then attaching them to the stereo system and make some womp 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 sounds and then um you know, uh, have a car stereo. First thing we gotta do is gonna be playing around in the trunk a little bit. There are two six by nine speakers in the rear uh, deck of this car and there is one wire that goes from an amplifier all the way down. I think that amplifier is broken now. So what we're gonna be doing is taking those wires and then we're gonna run new wire through the car up to the dash so I can wire it into my new deck. Okay, so after doing a little bit of research, uh, we I found the amplifier. Yeah, I just, I just now found it actually. I'm kidding, sorry. I removed the amplifier. Uh, that didn't work, I'm not gonna use it. So this is the wire that runs from the dash to the amplifier. I've removed the amplifier. I'm going to follow this wire down through the back seat. I have no idea how to get the back seats out of this car. It's not as easy as it should be. So I'm gonna pop those back seats out, run my wire following where this wire went. I might leave this wire because it's nice and if I ever do wanna run subs through here, that'll be nice. So I'm gonna run my wire through there and up into the dash. We ran our rear wires. Those blue wires are our rear wires that are gonna wire up into those speakers. Uh, it took a little bit of time and that was all spent removing these back seats. Uh, anybody is trying to do this at home, grab the top back seat and just yank on it and push in that way and then up and then out and just pull the damn thing off. It's uh, stupid. And um, yeah, pulling 40, 
five, seven year old back seats out. That's a hold your breath type of situation. Anyways, ran the wire down along the floorboards and under my dash. So next step, I'm going to wire up the speakers in the back to the wires I just ran and then I'll run them into the dash. We got the rear speakers wired up, the rear right and the rear left all wired up, going to the right speaker. These wires running back underneath the carpet and they're going into the stereo and we tested it. This was the first time I was able to wire up the Bluetooth with my phone and play through my phone and it worked out great. So that is pretty good. We are losing daylight. Oh my God, the light on my camera is so bright. We're losing daylight, which is a bummer. So I'm not gonna be able to show you guys the install for the front speakers, but that is the next thing I'm gonna do. And I'll just show you guys when I get them installed. Basically with this car, it doesn't come with a good spot to put them. So you have to build your own brackets, which is, you know, that's my kind of thing to do. So build some brackets for the speakers and mount them underneath the dash. She just wanted to be Speaking of 10,000 followers, we just hit 10,000 followers while I was filming this video. Thank you guys very much for the support. Thank everybody for liking and subscribing to the videos. It means a lot. I had no idea the channel was going to get to where it did. Uh, originally, I just wanted to get a couple people to watch some car stuff, and uh, it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So thank you all very much for supporting. Next milestone, 100,000. Hope you guys hang in there and get there with me. Uh, the car stereo is installed. It is done. I got two front speakers. I got two rear speakers. There's some acoustic things I need to worry about. Not worry about, but just figure out. A little bit of fine tuning will be done. And the face plate that I took off earlier in the video with the wood grain, I'm going to rebuild that with just a hole for the heater and a hole for the stereo. And then I'm going to redo it in black, but I don't want to film all that. So that is it for the car stereo, the Camaro car stereo. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, check us out, bsforbuild.com, facebook.com slash bsforbuild, Instagram, hashtag bsforbuild, and like and subscribe. Peace.